This year, it's more important than ever to do money differently if you want to have the financial independence you desire and you deserve. Listen, we all know that the pandemic has changed our lives forever, but it's also changed the way you approach money. And if you think that doing the same things that you did in the past are gonna get you ahead financially, you're gonna be sadly mistaken. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the 10 things you need to do differently with your money to get ahead and to put you on the wealth creation track in this year. So stay tuned and welcome to this episode of the Affluent Entrepreneur Show. I'll see you in the episode. This year is more important than any other year to do things differently with your money. Because here's the fact, if you want to, to move ahead with a financial future that's different than where you are today, you can't do the things that you did in the past. In fact, some of the tactics and strategies of the past just simply won't work. We've been through the pandemic, we've seen a ton of struggle, people were struggling, especially financially. I mean, we, we did it health-wise, but we also did it financially. People were losing their jobs. They were squandering their savings. They're stressed out. They're wondering how they're even gonna make ends meet, let alone build a future. But here's the thing, that doesn't need to be you. What we need to do is look at money differently and do some things differently. And in this video, I wanna walk you through 10 things to do differently with your money this year to help you get ahead, create an unshakable foundation and put you on the tra trajectory of true wealth creation. And what I want you to do is go through these 10 with me as a checklist to start to move things through. So uh, I'm gonna jump to my iPad and uh, I want you to show up differently for your money, for your future and for your family. So let me, let me help you out here. I'm gonna jump to the iPad, let's make this happen and and the, the first first part of this is to make sure that savings and investing is a priority, okay? Too often, especially in our world today, we're in a, in a place where we're focused on instant gratification. We're focused on, on what can we get today. And I'm just going to take a, the, the whole YOLO movement, you, you only live once movement, okay? I get it. However, if you live, you only live once and you're living from, from the edges of your check every single month, every single week, when you get to those later years of life, what are you going to do? Okay. There are so many people that have zero saved for retirement that their lifestyle is going to be squandered in, in, in their in their later years. And I don't want that to happen. So what we need to do is number one is make savings and investing a priority. And, and how we do this is to understand that our lifestyle is actually secondary. Our current lifestyle is actually secondary. I've, I've done this on, on prior prior videos or episodes, but let me let me show you what I'm, what I'm talking about is too often, too often what happens is that this is the way most people live their life is they, they make some income, okay? They pay their bills for their lifestyle and they see what's left over. And that's what they use to invest or save, okay? So it's the afterthought. It's the scraps, if you will. So you wanna build a future on the scraps? I don't think so. And, and I, I get it. You know, it's really e easy to say, well, I'm young, if you're young, uh, and we're all young. Uh, I'm 60, I still feel young. In fact, my wife, she tells me that I act 12. So I am young then, at heart. So here's here's the challenge is that they'll, you'll say, well, I've got time to invest. But if we understand the how investing works, it gets money momentum. There's this flat period of save, 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 invest, invest, invest. And then all of a sudden, the momentum of compounding takes effect and you have like a rocket ship growth. But we have to take care of that little flat period at the beginning. And the sooner we get in the game, the easier it is. You know, someone at 20 years old putting $158 a month away can turn that into a million dollars by the time they retire. 158 bucks, not even 50 bucks a week, 40 bucks a week. 
they can be a millionaire. Now, as you move into the 30, 40, 50, that number goes up and goes way up when you start to get into the latter years in order to have a million dollars for retirement. So the sooner we make investing and savings a priority, the easier it'll be on you. And more than ever, ever, now what we've been through has shown us the importance of saving and investing, to have the liquidity, to have that cash flow, which leads me to number two, number two. And that is get your liquidity up. This is all about that four letter word, cash. Cash. Here's the thing. By having liquidity, by having cash on hand. Now I get it. We can talk about inflation. I've got other, other sessions on inflation and everything. But if you don't have it, if you're living on credit cards, that's a problem. Let's get cash on hand to give you the liquidity to sustain yourself, the and to give you the options and the alternatives to say, I can buy choice. I've got liquidity to not take the first job that comes my way. I've got liquidity to say, to, to have a choice of, about what I want to do. I've got liquidity to give me peace of mind to eliminate some of the stress. This is why we have the wealth priority ladder, okay? And the wealth priority ladder, I walk people through exactly how to allocate your cash to give you, one, the unshakable foundation, and two, the pathway to wealth creation. And, and so if you want to understand that, uh, I go in deep, deep detail in episode 24 of, of the Affluent Entrepreneur Show. So go get episode 24 and go through that, but get yourself in a situation where saving and investing is a priority, and that you're building liquidity, you're building cash in, in, a, in a way that starts to give you some peace of mind, give you some flexibility and some cushion to operate from uh, in, in the future. It's going to be huge. And especially going into what we're going into, we've got the potential for rising interest rates. We've got some, in, some inflation coming in. So I have a feeling we're going to have some uncertainty and volatility. And when we have volatility, there's opportunities that you can take a hold of to buy things on sale. Real estate that starts to come back down or stocks that, that drop and that you can get into at, at an effective rate. But I want you to follow the wealth priority ladder because I don't want you buying investments and getting into things that are going to put you further into debt. If you're already into debt, uh, I want you to do it right. I want you to do it right to make that happen. All right. So let's look at number three. Oh, this one is, is big. Okay. I want you to be aware, beware of trends and fads. Okay. <laughs> this is the whole GameStop stuff. Okay. I want you to, I want you to avoid that. Like the plague. Listen, if it sounds too good to be true, it is. You want to get caught up in the emotions of the, the meme stocks and everything that is pure gambling and speculation. Okay. And a lot of people got hurt in that GameStop. Some people made, made money on the way up. The ones that were in early, it's like a freaking pyramid scheme. Okay. I want you to use sound investment principles, sound money principles, and use some rules so you don't do it. So we don't fall prey to the fads, the trends, and all of that stuff. And now some people are going to sit back and say, well, what do you think about Bitcoin? Well, let's face it. Bitcoin is extremely volatile. Okay. Blockchain, I don't think is going anywhere. I'm doing a lot of studying and and I'm working through some things. I'm testing some things so I can teach it more uh, to you. And when I get my perspective deeper, I'll bring it to you, but, but it's volatile. You don't want to put your liquidity in a volatile asset that, yeah, is it possible that it runs back up to $70,000 of Bitcoin? Yeah. Is it possible it runs back down to 20? Certainly is. So if you're going to look at the upside, you need to look at the downside. So I would be really careful around trends and fads. Now, if you have a substantial portfolio and you have liquidity and you want to put things into some volatile uh, assets for the up, upside potential, great. I do that. I'm not saying not to. I'm just saying we need to be smart, follow the rules to make that happen. Number four, this year, this year, number four, 
I want you to find a way to scale cash flow. Okay. Now I talk about eight revenue generators in the affluence blueprint, but uh, rent revenue scalers in, in the affluence blueprint. But let's talk about this. One is to increase your current income. So if you're in a business, how do we generate more revenue? How do we generate more profits? What do we need to do to make that happen? Um, there's a lot of different ways to do that. Like I said, I've got every eight revenue scalers that we that we work through to make that happen. Um, but the other the other side of it is is there other sources? Okay, we talk about something called the five incomes and and looking at things and saying. Can we create other sources of income with the things that we have, the, the things that we have at our disposal, our, our knowledge, our wisdom, our expertise, our products, something that is um, kind of an adjunct to what we're already doing that doesn't take a lot, side hustles. Our ability to create additional income streams and scale our income and cash flow gives you flexibility in the future and also gives you an opportunity to build the liquidity up faster and get you in the investing game sooner to make that. I'm hoping this is making sense for you. And then number four then leads me to number five. Number five, <laughs> do your best to avoid debt. Okay. Do your best to avoid debt. Um, look, I'm not one of those that that one of those people that says all debt is the devil. Um, I've talked about debt. If you want to understand how to how to deal with debt, I did an episode, episode, I believe it was episode 40, about how to get out of debt the affluence way, and we walk through it. But the reality is, is that in an uncertain time, if you have volatility or if you're in a situation where your income is, you're just at the bare, bare edges of the income, you don't want debt. You don't want to play the payment game. You want to avoid debt during these times and um, and it'll teach you. It'll bring discipline to it. So that's going to mean that there's going to be some expense management, getting really clear on what, what it is that that you're spending your money on, how you're spending your money, where it's going. All those things will, will help with not having the need to take on debt. Okay, so I would avoid debt, especially consumer debt and credit card debt. Now you might say, but Mel, I pay my credit cards off every month. Great. I do the same. Here's the challenge. Do you know one of the greatest reasons people want you to use credit cards or the swipe up function or store the credit card in your Amazon app? Huh? Is to remove the friction from your buying decision. The easier it is for you to buy, the more you spend. And if you look at the statistics and the studies of people that even spend, that even pay off their credit cards every single month, they don't carry a balance. Statistics show that they overspend by almost 30% because it doesn't, they don't feel the pain of counting out cash. They don't feel the pain of the purchase. And so they buy things that they wouldn't necessarily or otherwise buy because it seems easier. And then the bill comes due and they pay the bill. So they end up over overspending that. So just be aware of that. Number six. Number six is about having regular money conversations. This one's really, um, really important because we lost my dad 11 years ago. And then we lost Stephanie's dad, I think five years ago. And in both situations, our mothers, her mom and my mom, were panicked. They were mourning the loss, but they were panicked in the sense of, of their financial situation. I remember when we were back East in, in, in Virginia for uh, when, when Stephanie's dad passed away and I was upstairs and Stephanie came upstairs in tears and said, I said, what's wrong? And she says, my mom's downstairs in tears, scared that she's going to have to sell the house, that she can't keep the, afford to keep the house. 
And I stayed for a week. We stayed for an extra week and I worked some things out and she was fine and everything. And, but here's the thing. Neither her mother or my mother had regular conversations with our dads about money. And because of that, they they weren't informed. They didn't know what to do. They didn't have an understanding of what was there. They didn't understand whether they were okay or not okay. And they didn't know what to do. And, and they're emotional because of the loss of the, the love of their life. And they're trying to deal with it. And and I I think it's a mistake. Plus, growing up, we don't talk about money. Stephanie grew up in a household. I grew up in the same type of household where, no, it was impolite to talk about money. We don't talk about money. And therefore, there were no money conversations. And so... We didn't understand it. I want to have safe, sane money conversations with each of you. And I want you to take it home and have conversations there. So with that knowledge, with that understanding, you can grow. With that understanding, you can do things. With that understanding, you're not alone in dealing with this. It starts to dissipate the financial stress that's put on relationships in that process. I started having conversations with my son. I was a single full-time dad, raised Jeremy from five and a half, six years old. He's now 31. I literally started having conversations with him, you know, before he was 10 years old around money. I started paying him a salary at 11 years old and teaching him around money. He's 31. He's married. He's got his first child. They've got three homes and a multi-million dollar net worth. I think it works out okay when you have conversations and you teach your children and, and your loved ones the skill sets of wealth and not worry about just transferring assets. All right. So this one, I think, is really near and dear to my heart. And, and I think it's really important for us to do. And it'll go a long ways to making sure that no one gets blindsided with a downturn, an issue or something else. And you're not alone. You're not in isolation trying to juggle the bills, get things paid, figure out how you're going to do. You're in it together. So have regular money conversations. OK, regular money conversations. Number seven. Number seven is all about a cash resource plan. Now, some people will sit back and say, oh, my God, Mel is saying, get a budget. Well, maybe. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that, no, assign a task, a job description to every single dollar that comes into your life. This dollar is going to pay the mortgage. This dollar is going to going to pay for our food today. This dollar is going to go to uh, my retirement account. Here's the thing. Your dollars, your money, your currency, pounds, liras, uh, euros, whatever it is, they're like your employees. The only thing is that they're better than employees because they'll work for you seven days a week, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. They won't take PTO. They won't take sick days. They won't, they won't take time off. They don't call in sick. They don't unionize. They don't do any of that. They will work for you. But here's the problem. Most of us don't tell them what to do in a cash resource plan where you're telling your dollars what to do is a way to do it. Because what ends up happening in that process is just like, like I said, like employees, would you bring a bunch of employees in, not give them a job description, not give them goals, not give them tasks, not give them, uh, you know, projects to work on and just let them go and think that they're going to get you to the goal that you want? No. Why would we do it with our money? So we create a cash resource plan, not to restrict us, but to guide us towards the path to wealth creation, which leads me to number eight, more important than ever, is to then track your numbers monthly. In other words, if you don't know where your money's going, it's already gone. So if you have the cash resource plan, and then every month you're looking at where your money went, where it came into, how it allocated, did they do the job? This is like, this is like the review process. Once a month. Check the pulse on the patient. Make sure that you, you're, you spending is where it should be. You're investing is where it, it, it could be and that you're doing the right things and ask yourself, are there things that I can do that I learned from this month that I can do differently, better? And in that process, you have your regular money conversations. All this works together. But I promise you, you do these 10 things in, in this next 12 months. Things will completely shift for you this year financially. All right. That leads me to number nine. 
is leave your emotions at the door. Leave your emotions at the door. Um, this one is hugely important. And I've done some stuff on the emotions of money and how to conquer your, your money emotions and everything uh, in prior episodes. But when we make financial decisions from an emotional place, we make bad financial decisions. How did I get involved in that Ponzi scheme? Because they, they triggered the emotional response of, you know, oh, this is great. I mean, they, they really hit all the buttons. I mean, they were really good at it, okay? I'm a financial guy. I'm an expert witness that would go in trial to, to put these people in jail. In fact, I testified at the grand jury to indict him. I was not the type of person you would think would get taken in this. But because he got my emotions in the game, my logic, my thinking went down. So I always tell people that when your emotions go up, your financial intellect goes down. Okay, we get financially, emotionally stupid at times, and I'm not calling you stupid, but call me stupid when, when, when it happened. But the reality is that it was a gift for me. It's what gave me my investing rules that I teach today, that I talk about today. So no one else gets burned and hurt by this. But the key here is this, is that we do not make emotional money decisions. We make logical, analytical, strategic money decisions. And if you feel the emotional tug, if you feel emotions and excitement and all that stuff coming in and you haven't done the analysis, you haven't followed the rules or the principles, then you got to step back. Check the emotions at the door. Check the emotions at the door. All right. That leads me to number 10, number 10. Okay. And that is this, follow the wealth priority ladder. This is a, a piece of the affluence blueprint. I talked, I talked about it in, uh, episode 24 of the Affluent Entrepreneur Show. It's how you do cash. It's what you do with every dollar that comes in and what, what you do with the next dollar. It's, it's the path to creating a, a unshakable financial foundation for you and the path to wealth creation to build an affluent life. And so with that, what I these are the 10 things that I would do and that if you do them, I promise you, if you do them with discipline on a regular basis, consistently over the next 12 months, your financial world will change dramatically. All right. Use these 10 as a checklist. Use these 10 to move through it. If you need more resource, if you need resources, go to the show, go, go pick up episode 24, learn about the wealth priority ladder. I go in detail in there. If you're trying to get out of debt or something, Episode 40, if you're trying to figure out your money stories, go to, go to episode six. There's so many resources I have for you, but the point is that I can only put this out there. I need you to digest it. I need you to take action. I need you to get in motion. You can change your financial destiny. In fact, your financial independence is a birthright. I want to give you the pathway to claim it. And this is one of the steps. So I hope you found this of value. I hope that you, you take this to heart and you go out and make a difference in your financial destiny, your family's financial destiny, and your future. This can be generationally shifting for you and your world. If you have questions, if anything comes up, do me a favor, send them to me. DM me. Let me know. I want to be able to help you through this. We'll just make this a financial breakthrough year for you. And until we get a chance to see each other in the next video or in the next episode. Always, always strive to live a life that outlives you. Cheers.